Hello, Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian here at Fluidville Public Library, bringing you another Crafty at Home Cafe video. Uh, for those local who have signed up for this program to pick up material supply kits, we are, you're hopefully already aware that curbside service has been suspended. We will notify you when service is available again and you'll be able to pick up your material supply kits. And as our videos usually start, I'm going to go ahead and show you what would be in that material supply kit. I'm going to get a bag here. This kit craft is the taxidermy toy, one that I've kind of wanted to do for a while but had to find a way to do. So the first thing you'll have in here is a little wooden banner piece. We are providing um, the string to hang it up, Velcro circles to attach your paga corn to it, and three paint brushes for decorating him. Um, and including those paint brushes, you'll have uh, one string of six paint pots and an additional paint pot with brown paint in it. And the, a furniture repair marker that you'll be able to use to decorate the wooden um, banner piece. And the final piece in here, our animal of the hour, Mr. Pugacorn, that we printed uh, with our 3D printers that you'll be able to paint and attach. So let's get started crafting. All right, so we're ready to start making our taxidermy toy. Um, I have all of our supplies here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the wooden banner. Um, because painting on the wood would affect the adhesive of the little Velcro circles, I am using this furniture repair marker instead to almost stain this um, piece of wood. These are great and great for crafting. Um, the packs that they came in are four different, four or five different colors. Um, so each bag is going to have a slightly different colored um, marker in it. So you'll be able to use these. If you did want to paint the wooden piece, you would be able to. Um, I would just recommend leaving a space where your pug of corn will go, where the paint isn't so that the adhesive of the Velcro can stick a little bit easier to the wood than on the paint. Um, this one is a pretty dark one. I kind of like it. And I'm just going across with the pen. Okay, so I've got my wooden um, banner piece colored here. I really like these because they soak right into the wood. And then if you've got a, some furniture, some wooden furniture this color, now you have a little bit of bonus um, repair marker that you might be able to use. Um, so as you see, I've already gotten something on my work surface. So I have put down some tablecloth so that I make sure that I'm not ruining the surface that I'm working on. I can go ahead and set this aside now and we'll come back to him actually. Let's put him up there. And we're ready to paint our pug corn. This will be our next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out my brushes and also set aside my Velcro circles and my twine for hanging later. I can recycle my little bag. You'll get three brushes. There is a flat brush for some of the larger area painting, um, a medium brush for some detailed work, and then a very tiny brush for the detail, unlike in his little nose or his eyes or anything like that. So the paint colors that we've provided are some fun ones. We have kind of a teal, blue, um, a lighter pink, and a purple. Um, and then black and white, as well as kind of a taupe brown, um, something you've probably seen pugs in and then just a regular brown so that you can do some mixing um, for a color that you might like. I've got just a scrap paper here that I can use both for mixing colors and um, for cleaning my brushes between colors. Um, so for this little guy because my um, banner piece is a little bit darker I think I want him to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna very carefully open all of my paints here. 
go and a little bit of brown. Oh, trying to open the wrong side of him. There we go. All right, so I've got all my paints out. And I'm really just going to start with some of this nice lighter cream brown. I want it to be a little bit browner. So I'm going to grab some of this regular brown and make him a little darker here. And since I know I might need a little bit more before I get to the end, I'm going to make sure I have enough paint on here. Uh, probably using something that isn't paper would do a little bit better and I would keep a little bit more of my paint that I'll be able to pull back right, a little bit more. Pull back in. Pull it in. Oh, I like that color. All right. Um, if you've got gloves and you want um, to put some on so that you don't get paint on your hands, you can do that. Um, I recommend not painting in clothes that might um, that you don't want to get paint on. And we're just going to give him a pretty solid coat. Um, this white filament covers pretty well with acrylic. Get it all in there in this little part. I have smoothed these down some with sandpaper when you get them, although there still may be a few little flyaway pieces um, left from the printers. These guys are necessarily small because the printers that the 3D printers that we have are fairly small on the bed size, so we can't really print anything too big or involved. But these were kind of fun. Um, I've seen this craft done with um, folks needle felting little animals or uh, finding plastic toys that they can cut in half. Um, really older plastic toys kind of work a little bit better because they're a little more likely to be solid all the way through um, and you get something on the back that you can use to actually put your um, adhesive to. Uh, newer toys very likely to be hollow on the inside and so you kind of have to do a little bit more um, to adhere them to whatever banner that you're putting them on. Um, you'll notice that I'm not painting on the very back of the Puggercorn. I'm just kind of making sure that my paint goes all the way up to the edge and just over the edge so that when I do add my Velcro circles to this guy and get him attached, um, I don't have to worry about those being on paint and that piece will be hidden. Uh, part of the reason I chose to use Velcro circles um, for this particular craft is this is something you could actually have another piece for. You could change them out depending on the mood or the season. Maybe we have a little Santa dog or a Santa cat, a little Valentine's bunny, you know, things that you could change throughout the year. Um, but for this one, we were just able to kind of get these little guys. And because I'm going over his eyeballs with black later, I'm not too worried about getting this brown paint on them now as I go. All right, and I think for the purpose of time, we're gonna go ahead and do a little video magic and we'll speed up this painting process here and you'll be able to see how that goes. And just knowing that your own painting process is gonna take a little bit longer.
Okay, so our pug corn is mostly painted here. I'm going to do one more fun little thing that I love doing. Um, I think our pug corn here needs his little nails painted. Mine is obviously a little bit more fantastical. And as we've provided you paints of a number of different colors, you'll be able to make your pug as fantastical as you would like. I'm giving him a little painted toenails and I've given him purple ears and his beautiful pug corn horn and these purple, pink, and blue. Got my pink and I need a little blue nail. That pug of corn is very fun. All right, so there he is. Actually, maybe you saw I was adding some color to the chest area here. I might just go with a little bit more. Line it up a little, a little white along the chest. There's a hint of purple in there. I'm just kind of blending it all in. This brush is really dried out, so it's perfect for kind of dry brushing through. Oh, yeah. There he is. Now, when you're putting yours together, I will recommend you give it um, a pretty significant dry time um, so that you don't get um, any spots where the paint comes off. Um, although, as it has Velcro, you'll be able to remove it um, and reposition it. So, I don't get any paint on anything. I'm going to go ahead and close my little paint pots here. And bring back my wooden picture frame. The little Velcro circles, um, you're going to want to, I'm just going to use my nail to hold down the Velcro circle while I peel the backing so that it doesn't come off. There we are. And I'm just gonna turn my little pug of corn guy over here. Um, I do kind of want him spread out a little bit. So I'm gonna put that guy there. Again, using my nail to hold down the Velcro while pulling the backing away. And then coming over here with my second one. I put them out pretty far. Hold down the Velcro circle while I remove the backing. So now he's got his two little Velcro circles on there. I'm going to go ahead and place him down kind of where I want him here. My little blue eyed pug. Pushing him down. As you can see, I'm getting paint on my hands because I did not wait very long. And there's our little pug of corn on his plaque. <clears throat> and as I said, I can gently remove him. Um, so I'd be able to match up circles on another toy and be able to change this around. Now, for the hanging, we've got our jute twine here. Um, I have either gone from the back to the front so that you get a little bit of twine look there, or you can come in from the front to the back and um, just have the wood there. I might even consider painting like a name or something on the top of this. Um, so once I get the twine through the two front holes, I'm gonna bring my two ends together here and I'm just gonna make a tight knot pretty close to the top. And then that'll move around. I could hang it just like that, but I think I want him a little shorter, so I'm gonna make a second knot and make myself a little loop in the twine that I can use to hang on a hook here. So now I have a little loop there that I can use to hang him up. And this is our taxidermy toy. We hope that you enjoyed this Crafty at Home Cafe. And we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you. We'd love to see what yours turn out like.